So guys, during the last week we talked a little bit about some of the aircraft that were actually leaked on the major leaks that we had, right? We talked about the SU-34, the F-15E and the F-117, but today I wanted to talk about an aircraft that not a lot of people mention too much, you know, it's kind of a forgotten aircraft on that leak list, and it is the Tornado GR-4. It might at first feel like a forgotten aircraft and a not interesting aircraft but i really wanted to talk about it because it is pretty interesting on the weapon system so let's get going right first of all what is it well it's a mid-life upgrade to the older gr1s made in the 90s okay so this is the main idea a mid-life upgrade right uh it's supposed to extend the service life of the aircraft introducing modernization and of course maintenance of things right so it is supposed to be an aircraft that will continue the path of the GR1 throughout the future in the 90s, right? The performance of it is very, very similar to the Asta one in the Italian 1995 Tornado, right? Because these are two Tornadoes that use the Mark 103. So the GR4 uses the new Mark 103 engine. Uh, the GR1 has the weaker engine. It's around three kilonewtons only of difference, but yes, it is going to be a little bit stronger, making the British finally have their own aircraft with the best engine of the aircraft in the game right so that's good so it will be a little bit faster which which is cool fast accelerating and everything differences are minor but still they are there for the sensors sensors part we have a new hud a new gps system for navigation new mvd integration of course we already have that in the game with the gr1 but still new avionics modernized ones and a new integrated FLIR system in parallel with the laser range finder and marked target seeker the lrmts so be, like on the side of the LRMTS, there is a FLIR system instead of nothing. Okay, so because of that system, that FLIR system added there, there was no space for the gun, the left gun. So one of the guns were removed, was removed, just like the ADV. Uh, got their gun removed okay addition of data link systems of course for modernizations and maybe the addition of a new pod c-i-a-l-d is kind of old and there are photos of the lightning tube being used uh so it will be similar to the asta pod probably uh but i couldn't confirm it on a written source just there are photos uh, of the gr4 using these more modernized pods right so hopefully it's added because it needs to have a better one right for the weapon system this is where I think the fun actually is. Uh, for the gun, of course, as I said, uh, one of the guns were removed, but of course, it still has the BK 27 Mauser 27 millimeter revolver gun, right? So it's the same gun, just like the ADV, one only. Okay, the pylons are the same, so you can carry basically the same amount of weight and stuff. Of course, it has a little bit more power, so that might be you know better for the aircraft to fly it and stuff fly and stuff but still uh it is pretty much the same payload on the sense of weight and stuff for air to air of course uh the a9l is the initial missile but i'm pretty sure you could use the a9m um i couldn't confirm it again but it, i just i mean i would guess that he could right uh so depending on the br that he receives i would need something like the a9m to defend itself and I mean, it might even use the SRAM, the AIM-132, uh, right? But I, I kind of doubt that we will see this missile for now, okay? It would be way too OP for now. Uh, but in the future, maybe to keep it up with the other missiles and other aircraft, yeah, the SRAM as well. So, And then we go for the air-to-ground. We have technically new four weapons and one removal that we don't have in the game at all, right? So the removal was the nuclear capability of the tornado. It was removed from the GR4, okay? So that's one of the th changes. Uh, we don't have that in the game, so don't care but uh yeah then we have the new weapons the first one would be the storm the storm shadow cruise missile this is a very very good missile uh turbo jet powered cruise missile 450 kilograms of a warhead it is subsonic being a, like an old cruise not old but you know cruise missile so it's subsonic uh 500 plus kilometers of range mainly gps and inertial guidance uh, systems to guide itself and in the final attack maneuver, when he actually climbs and stuff and he do kind of a top-down attack, he jettisons the nose cone of the missile and he reveals an IR imaging system to calculate the best place to attack. 
it is 100% fire and forget and after it's shot there is no way of changing the target it is programmed before by mission planners okay there are modernizations efforts to be able to have a two-way data link to be able to change targets but uh we're not gonna get too much into that that it's a very mod like modern modernization and other programs and stuff so we're not gonna get too much into that but after 2005 at least uh it has a one-way data link uh to report back if it hit the target or not okay uh, it has more of a strategic value than tactical, so it destroys more strategic targets, bridges, structures, bunkers, uh, stationary, you know, ships and stuff, than specific tanks and moving targets. So, to be honest, although it would be very cool to see it in the game, I don't think it has a place in the game. It's more of a strategic weapon than a tactical weapon, which means that it doesn't have really a place in the game, unless we are using it against bases or anything like that, right? Or a cluster of uh, targets in an air battle or something, because in a ground battle, you will probably miss a 450 kilogram warhead. It's a pretty good warhead, but at the same time, it's not good enough to just miss a target it needs to kind of hit the target right so i don't know if it's ever gonna be added maybe depending on what the other aircraft are receiving in this patch right then we go for the brimstone this is where i think it really starts to shine and where it has kind of a place in the game this is basically the super hellfire that the british developed right this is an anti-armor missile this is where uh where the storm, sh storm shadow cannot really do well while against tanks and stuff the brimstone is perfect for this for columns of tanks everything very large like large areas that have a lot of targets and stuff the brimstone is here to destroy everything anti-armor as i said tunding warhead um it has a very very effective you know hit mark of 98 percent plus of hit rate in real life scenarios and it has basically in, in its initial variants a radar seeker so it will find a target with its radar and it will actually target the target in the place where it knows it will penetrate so really really modern right um initial models as i said were only radar but after a while in afghanistan and other places due to some things that happened uh they started to use a dual seeker which is a radar and laser that the rio can actually choose between the two to actually attack a target it's funny because they can even for example have a search pattern in a place find the target and destroy the target or if they don't find anything self-destruct so it's a very very smart missile completely fire and forget okay uh so remember that of course we even have better upgrades to it um like the brainstorm 3 and uh, and 2 and stuff but we're not gonna talk too much about it i maybe we will not even see the first one because it might be too op imagine the modernized ones right so it is a very modern anti-armor vehicle uh, the, you know system similar to the hellfire but way better way more modern right and last but not least, the paveways. It has modernizations done to the paveway. So it uses the paveway 3, which is the GBU-24 of, for example, the F-16C. Uh, so it has inertial navigation systems and together with the laser. So it will be a lot more precise than the paveways that we have in the GR-1. And of course, we have the GR-4, the paveway 4, which is a modernized, technically, you know, uh, GBU-12. So instead of only having the laser guidance, it has a GPS guidance as well, which means that the missile is really, really precise because uh, you can fire and forget this missile and uh, this bomb and just ignore it and it will hit a specific target with all laser guidance, just like a JDAM. But uh, at the same time, for final guidance, you can use the laser to be really precise when the target is moving, right? But the thing is, you cannot... Uh, you just don't have to worry about the FOV of the GBU-12, that you can miss some bombs sometimes if you're not careful because of that, right? The FOV of the GBU-12s are very, very small. So this is just making the GBU-12s or any type of guide, laser guided bomb, way more precise. So GBU-24, more precise, and the, the Paveway-4 as well, right? Together with the Brimstone, we have some very, very interesting missiles and missiles that are basically making the GR-4 worth to actually get 
that. Uh, so basically, this is it. It's a modernized GR-1 uh, that doesn't have a lot of upgrades to the aircraft itself, but the missiles, the bombs, this is where it shines, right? Uh, the Brimstone, if it comes, it will destroy everything. It is maybe too OP for the game, uh, but... Um, the Paveway 4, man, that thing is cool. A GPS guided GBU 12, I mean, it's just, it's so cool. And of course, hopefully the Storm Shadow, but again, it really doesn't have a place maybe in the game. It would be just very, very cool to have it, right? But this is it, guys. The GR4 is that, uh, like I said, GR1 modernized with some very, very modern weapon systems. Hopefully it's at it. Let me know in the comments if you like this video or not. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you think the Tornado GR4 is gonna come or not. Does it have a place in the game? Let me know. I know you British mains love this thing because of the Brainstorm and the Storm Shadow. So let me know in the comments what you think about those missiles. And I see you guys on the next one. Subscribe, click the like button and bye guys. See ya.